SCP-003 is to be maintained at a constant temperature of no less than 35 degrees Celsius and ideally kept up above 100 degrees Celsius. No living multicellular organisms of level 4 or higher complexity may come into direct contact of SCP-003. In the event of a total power failure, if SCP-0031 begins to increase its mass, personnel assigned must engage in skin contact with SCP-0031. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-0031 to critical temperature, however, skin contact must always be kept with SCP-003 to avoid SCP-003 reaching activation temperature lasting at minimum until SCP-0031 reaches its second stage of growth. Personnel who enters SCP-003 containment area must be examined for body parasites of level 4 or above. Personnel whom are fined to have parasites must be sterilized before making contact with SCP-003. Any personnel who came into contact with SCP-003 must report for sterilization imminently after contact. SCP-0031 must never be separated from SCP-0032 except in case of emergency procedures detailed. Any change in SCP-0032 rooms activity, including pattern, frequency or color, should be reported in three hours of occurrence. Cessation of rune activity must be reported straight away. SCP-0032 must be supplied with power via the source designed generator 0039 at all times. Description SCP-0033 consists of two components of different origin, referred to as SCP-0031 and SCP-0012. SCP-0031 consists of chitin hair, and nails of unknown origin and biology, arranged in configuration similar to that of a computer motherboard. Testing reveals SCP-0031 to predate earlier known circuit boards by thousands of years. SCP-0031 appears to be sentient but not actively dangerous unless under threat. SCP-0031 was created for the sole purpose of containing SCP-0032, partially interpreted data recovered from SCP-0032 may refer to the past and or potential future LK class restructuring event caused by SCP-0031. SCP-003 was located by the remote viewing team SRV-04 Beta. It appears possible the SRV-004 Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-0032. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence, maybe by similar means. Despite this activity, SCP-0032 does not appear to be sentient, based on its lack of reaction to MO3 Gloria analysis and procedures. When SCP-003 drops below temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius, both of the components react. First, SCP-0031 enters a growth state characterized by an extreme increase in mass. This growth consists of two stages, in both stages, SCP-0031 partially fuels its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any material surrounding it, including atmospheric elements then non-living organic material, including dead skin cells, hair, chitin, enamel, keratin, and other biological materials. The first stage is always the same. SCP-0031 will first increase its mass, then take a form similar in shape to an ephiroid, brittle star, of 15 meters in diameter, it will form sensory organs that appear to scan the environment around it and will partially convert the area around it to a unidentified anomalous substance, SCP-0032 seems immune from conversion. During each of SCP-0031's growth stages, SCP-0032 releases bursts of radiation that temporarily inhabits SCP-0031's growth, or reverse this growth when the temperature of SCP-0031 rises above 100 degrees Celsius. 
similar radiation emissions have been replicated or recorded via other anomalous means. Addendum 00301, acting on information gathered from linguistic analysis of SCP-0032-S runes and comparative data analysis. Research team MO3 Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP-003 and data expunged for analysis of functions. SCP-0031 must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of one kilometer from data expunged and the resulting byproduct at all times. Addendum 00302 SCP-0032-S power loss has been exacerbated by the procedures performed by MO3 Gloria. On orders of 0510, MO3 Gloria will continue procedures. Addendum 0303 During MO3 Gloria procedures, SCP-0031 doubled its mass and began rapid structural growth. Temperature was immediately returned to 100 degrees Celsius. Growth and mass increase of SCP-0031 continued for 9 minutes and 6 seconds, at which time a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-0032. In response, SCP-0031 returned to its normal state in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. New growth dissolved into a dusty residue which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-0031 and SCP-0032 seized all detectable activity. SCP-0032 did not resume activity until connected to external power source. SCP-0032's runes glowed uniformly gray and did not resume normal activity for 3, 3, hours. SCP-0032 no longer appears to be able to maintain containment area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supplied by generators 0033 through 9. Addendum 00304, the procedure detailed in Addendum 00303 was repeated, and SCP-0031 again entered a growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds. SCP-0032 once again produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-0031's growth stopped for 36 seconds, then resumed at its previous pace. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-0031 formed a coherent outer shell and body. After appearing to scan its environment and partially converting its environment, SCP-0031 then breached containment entering the observation gallery where nine members of MO3 Gloria were present. On physical contact with team members, SCP-0031 encompassed them in rapidly grown appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-0031 then resumed growth, and rearranged the component parts of the center of its form to the shape of a 3-meter tall female humanoid with peripheral tentacles shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-0031's newly formed hair and spine. SCP-0031 then produced rudimentary vocalizations in an apparent initial attempt to communicate with researchers. Data expunged. An unknown individual approached the compromised containment area in company of a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of 0510 and attempted communication with SCP-0031. Data expunged. Following this incident, Agent Jackson of MO3 Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-0032 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-0031 returned to its normal state in 21 minutes and 7 seconds, and was successfully recontained without incident. All nine members of MO3 Gloria affected by SCP-0031 were afterwards found to be physically unharmed, with no residual effects besides psychological trauma. The converted materials of SCP-003's former containment area did not dissolve and are now under analysis.